What's up, Rockstars? Sadly, the first video I'm making in 2023 is a negative one for the industry, but it's something we definitely need to talk about. Thank you to my channel sponsor, Into the AM. As a company that believes hard work and a great product is a proper way to conduct business, I am delighted to have them as part of the channel. They have some of the coolest graphic t-shirts around and an absolute best fit and feel that has continually exceeded my expectations. With new shirts arriving all the time and other products like boxers, hats, and even a monthly shirt club, I wholeheartedly recommend them to you. Check out the link in my description of this video for an exclusive 10% off everything they sell. Now, before we get into that negativity, though, I do want to say a few things. First of all, I apologize for the slight gap in videos. It actually wasn't me taking vacation. It was me not feeling well. I'm still feeling a little under the weather, as it would say, but my throat is feeling much better today, which means I can actually talk. So here I am on here. But if I don't look my best, which is all the time, really, <laughs> or if I don't sound or maybe act as spunky as perhaps I have in the past, it's it's because of that. I do apologize for that. Uh, sickness gets us all, and that's how I decided to spend New Year's Eve and New Year's and all that sort of stuff. So anyway, uh, with that also, guys, thank you so much for the uh, incredible support uh, for my fundraiser. If you don't know, I fundraise every single year at kind of the end of the year, late December into January. And that is to keep this channel community driven, community run and focused on the community so that I can just kind of do what I need to do, take time away if I need to, if I feel sick, for instance, or, you know, just cover stuff that isn't as popular perhaps and all that kind of stuff. I purposely do that. I've talked to other, uh, uh creators about that because normally you kind of have to chase what's popular to get the views, to then get the AdSense, to then make sure that you get the sponsors and all that other kind of stuff. And it's nice to be able to focus on more indie stuff and not feel too bad about it. And that's because of the constant income through Patreon, which again, thankful for all that YouTube members, and of course the fundraiser for the big ticket items. So just thank you so much. We were actually over 7,000 raised. And if you didn't know, that means that if you donated $20 or more, you will be getting a commemorative coin. It'll be the first time I'm doing this year. Uh, it's in the design phase, as you can see now. I think it's pretty cool and uh, already looking for what more I can do, of course, especially going into the year. And uh, yeah, the next one is community voted video topic. That's exactly what I'm talking about. If you have a game that maybe is uh, you need an update on or you need me to look into or something like that, and maybe it's not the most popular thing, it's an older game, something like that, well, that's what the community is all about. And I make these for you guys. So if you guys want me to talk about it, I certainly can. So again, just thank you so much. And of course, this is linked down below along with several links for Sky Kingdom games. If you didn't know, this is Sky Kingdom games. And really, one thing I wanna point out, besides the fact that I wanna humanize everything and make sure you guys know that there are actually people here, is that this Eric, he's kind of the actual only employee of the company. So while there are definitely like his his friends and designers and stuff here and all that, they only, they're not like full employees or anything like that, They they work you know, more of a, as a contract as needed sort of thing where they, you know, they work with artists and stuff like that as well. But they're definitely running a um, lean ship over there, it sounds like, which is great. That's good to hear. Um, it was, I actually reached out to Sky Kingdom Games before making this video and I uh, they actually responded to every single question I had and I did have quite a big list for them. And it's not a fun subject to have. But I wanted to make sure to hear their side, get as much information as I can for you so that you guys know the full extent of what's going on, much more than even just their update showed. So let's discuss the update, but I will include the information that they provided as well. Uh, and thank you to the Sky Kingdom Games and Eric, of course, for actually uh, responding to my inquiry. So the Isafarian Guard is kind of their main thing. This is the kind of their, their main breadwinner, as it were, one of their main successes. And it's been long in the coming. It's been about four years now that they've been working on this in about three years since the Kickstarter. And if you didn't know, it's been delayed. It's been delayed, I think, to July now or something like that. It's 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 coming, but it it's a ways out. Um that being said, that being said, there is an issue right here where essentially Eric is going over the fact that, hey, guess what? They don't have enough to ship the game. Stop me if you've heard this one before. Uh this should not be really a surprise to anyone. I've told you guys this over and over again. Uh, if you have a campaign that was around this time, I think this launched in about 2019, the Safarian Guard. So if you have a campaign that launched pre-COVID and it still has not delivered yet, 
I promise you that they did not raise enough money <laughs> to cover the increase in manufacturing costs, the increase in like just logistical cost of getting everything around and bidding on all sorts of things and paying different fees and you know the last mile shipping and all that kind of stuff. Like it's just more expensive to make these already expensive games. On top of that, anything that hasn't de delivered yet normally is because of scope creep. And this is something Eric even admitted to as well, that, you know, there was a lot of scope creep when it came to the Safarian Guard and they added a lot. Now, at the end of the day, when you get the product, that is normally a pretty good thing. But getting the product becomes the hard part as well. Um, and so there's not a way to really reverse time, but it is something to take a look at. Look at the games that you have backed and just know that you're either going to have to pay more or they're going to have to pay more. And they can do that through a variety of ways. We've seen companies uh, sell add-ons. We've seen companies ask for money. We've seen companies take personal loans. We've seen companies uh, offer savings in the future. Uh, all sorts of various spins on the need for more money. Maybe they just launched more Kickstarters and hope for the best. Uh, so I want to explain kind of the situation as best I can and what you can do for sure. So the Isafarian Guard uh, is about 100000 less. Now, if you play this video, which I highly suggest you do, and I'll link to it down in the description below, of course, um, they actually go over quite a few numbers. I'm going to go ahead and pull up those numbers uh, just so I have reference to them. Uh, and the, I'll try to put them on the screen so that you guys can see it as well. So they raised a total of $782,900. Now, what's cool about that is that was actually based off of this plus more. So 260,938 is what they raise on Kickstarter. That goes to show you, by the way, the benefit of the pledge manager. Having a pledge manager that is open to everyone, that's not locked behind some stupid $10 fee, I'm looking at you, Ludus Manus Studio, or uh, otherwise, uh, that can really benefit. And you get more people, more fans of your company, of your game. Uh, that was for 3,934 backers raised that. But in total in the PM, it it was $782,900, like I said, $210,700 of that was shipping. Now that shipping was in 2021 that they charged that. So it was a little bit better. And that's why it's only about 100K off um, for such a big game. And, and I'll show that as well. Um, and for so many people, we'll talk about the backer numbers also. But they, they kind of waited until they had a final uh, like wait essentially, or at least what they thought was going to be the final iteration of the game, you know, before they actually got like more hard numbers to then charge shipping, which kind of makes sense. You think, you know, once you're pretty much done, oh yeah, we'll just finish and uh, then ship it out. And, you know, it shouldn't change that much, right? Well, obviously it did change still somewhat from then, but also there was a bit of more scope creep involved in that too. And uh, it, it, again, you know, Eric's, you know, upfront about this and uh, definitely there's some lessons learned. I think when it comes to going through all this, but, but with the 210,000 shipping, that means that there's still a difference of $311,262 that they brought in from the pledge manager, not including shipping at all. So that's just an extra 311,000. In other words, they over doubled the amount that they funded in the, by using the pledge manager than they did on Kickstarter alone. That's pretty impressive. Actually, that's a very healthy pledge manager. And really, I mean, it, it's, 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 quite telling, right? That's for 5,200 backers compared to the 3,934 that they had before. So over 5,000 people are in for this, so which is uh, pretty incredible. Now, now let's talk a bit about their costs. So they have uh, 537,000 that they claim is for manufacturing, development, and fees. Now, I really wish that was broken out more. I know they're trying to be transparent, but also not trying to inundate you with uh, information. I had the same problem when I covered shipping last year where I tried to kind of simplify things a bit uh, so that I didn't inundate people with numbers and, you know, minutia and stuff like that. But it ends up just causing more questions and actually answering anything. And it's almost as if you shouldn't provide it at all. So uh, how much of that was manufacturing? How much of that was development? How much of that is, you know, like development of the game, like paying, like, like, like where is the money going for? What are the fees? And what does that look like? I don't know because it's just the one number. Um, and I did not inquire about a breakdown of that per se. Um, at, at the end of the day, a company does not actually have to tell you all of this. Even on Kickstarter, they will share what they wish to share. And we just need to be as grateful as we can for it. And please ask for more if needed. Uh, so it's, it's kind of a fine 
fine line between the two there. But suffice it to say, 537,000 to just kind of make the product, and then 346,204 to transport and ship. That's the final 2023 uh, numbers that they got uh, just recently. So. Uh, yeah, a lot to ship this. It's a very big game. 5,200 people are getting it. And then they have, they made a total of 6,000. The rest is for web sales and replacements. You have to order more so that if somebody has a broken mini, you can send them one. You essentially tear those games apart and give you know a new board to one person and uh, or the right amount of tokens for the other one and a mini for this one and stuff like that. That's how they get that is from extra copies. And then of course, web sales as well. And of course, the web sales will help with the de de the uh, issue here, which is about a hundred thousand dollars less, because if you add the 537, you add the 346, it does not equal 782. It equals more, about a hundred thousand more, a hundred thousand three hundred ish, actually. Now that comes to about twenty dollars per backer. Uh, so they need money, right? Uh, th there's there's not a an easy way for them to cover this. Now I did ask, what happens if you don't raise the amount? Because I know you guys are already asking that. So I went ahead and asked uh, because they didn't address it in the update. So I'm providing that for you guys. Uh, they do have a plan forward to be able to everybody still get their game and finance and all that stuff if needed, if the community comes short. That being said, it does put them in a sticky situation as a company when it comes to going forward, which makes sense. In other words, you're dipping into any sort of like profits at all to keep going and keep making something um, if you're doing that. Uh, if you're inundated with either no money or debt or anything like that, then you can't uh, easily continue to run. And they definitely have more uh, games planned. Now, speaking of more games planned, and we'll get back to this, the Firing Guard, do note that they do have a Dungeons of Infinity that they launched afterwards. This is a separate game and additionally a separate pool of funds. They're not touching this at all. They're not taking from this to deliver the other one. And so that is something again that I asked and they clarified this is this is in no way affects this at all. This is on its own separate with its own set of money to deliver and stuff like that. Now, uh, where that is in the process, I don't know, it was delayed, I think, until July. So there is that. But suffice it to say that seems to be fairly safe. And so they're just focusing on the Safari and Guard here uh, for the delivery. Uh, okay, so what are they doing? Well, really what they're doing is this. Instead of asking for more money and saying, you don't get your game if you don't pay, they are offering artwork collections and they have a tip jar. So they have a kind of a designer's pick for $10 and then they have the complete collection which has 15 uh, uh uh, art items, I believe, instead of, I forget how many this one has. This is kind of the main one, though. You get uh, some other cool ones. They print these out. They're very high quality. You can print them out as whole posters. They're digital art uh, that you get right away if you, if you buy it, and that's $10 and $20, so you can get the art asset. Additionally, there is a tip jar. As an FYI with a tip jar, it only goes up to $50, but you can change the quantity to do as much as you wish. So feel free to do that as well. Again, all of that helps. Now, last I heard, just right off the bat, they got it instantly 25% of what they need, which is already a very good support. And it seems the sentiment is positive. However, like I said, I did ask, oh, well, what happens if you don't get enough? And so they'll figure that out uh, exactly how much of a plan they have to do if they fall short and by how much. But the the they did reassure that they do have a path forward on that. So no matter what, you guys seem like you're going to be getting your game. But the more you can help with them, the more they actually have a future as a company. So I guess I want to just kind of like end this with a quick uh, comment on this. Uh, I covered this in depth in 2022 and I didn't want to in 2023 not because I I you know d I'm just tired of it though I don't like doing these kind of videos but because I want the industry to be doing better right I will say though that a company that is sharing their money uh, like their 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 values you know here's how much we made here's the manufacturing cost here's the shipping cost right real numbers that certainly helps it helps that they only have one employee, so they're definitely running a fairly lean machine when it comes to that. They're not having to pay a whole bunch of sculptors and artists and stuff with benefits and all sorts of other full-time employee nonsense that you don't need for a small indie development team. So they're doing that as well. This was definitely their biggest project. There were some growing pains. They're very adamant about owning up to that, right, about learning from that, hopefully. 
Uh, and overall, I get a, a pretty good sense from this company. So uh, I, I think that's good, but it does suck that this keeps happening and it's going to continue to happen. Like I said, go ahead and check your pledges, see what you've backed that you haven't gotten yet from like the 2019-ish era or even before. And uh, yeah, no matter what, they're they're not making any money on that. And that really sucks. It really sucks to work on something like this, a fairy and guard, I feel, for so many years and end up just barely breaking even if at that. Like, it, I want these companies... And not just the, the this company, but all companies to make great money and do well and not have to feel like they need to nickel and dime us for every ounce of profit because they're comfortable with the money that they're making and we're comfortable with the prices that we're getting for the product that we're getting. That's the ideal world on my mind where there's happy developers, happy uh, consumers, and everybody's just happy. But that doesn't seem to be something that's going to be the case going forward for some time, I feel. Uh, manufacturing costs aren't really going down. Uh, as far as I can tell, they're, they're staying pretty steadily high, uh, at least compared to what they used to be. So the, uh, the age of getting these games cheaper at this size is gone. However, I think developers in general need to get smarter about the product that they're offering, not just the scope creep, but just just how they're even manufacturing it. I look back at like something like Elden Ring where every single person has their own uh, like combat thing. So it's all repeated and all printed out the same stuff. If we can find ways to make that cheaper so you can still play the game but not manufacture so much, they will weigh less, it'll be less space, it'll be easier for us to store, easier for us to ship, and easier for us to afford to buy in the first place. So I think that's kind of the goal going forward. But either way, there are links down below to those uh, art uh, assets, those tip jars, my fundraiser, and of course their other game that's actually still open in the Pledge Manager. Just know that that's helping that one and maybe the future of them but not necessarily the delivery of the safari guard because it is a separate money pool and uh yeah i'll be up to date with more news here soon of course as well also have an unboxing and review for stone saga from um games so that's coming up there's a lot still coming up and i'm excited to get back into it now that i'm feeling a little bit better and hopefully that trend continues up and i feel better and better every day guys thank you so much for being here uh here's to a better 2023 let's hope this is the last one i can put it to bed and it's just all sorts of awesomeness coming forward that's the hope anyway fingers crossed right guys all right take care bye